Welcome back to the coverage of YCS Madrid, where we're nearing its conclusion. We are in the top eight now, so only three more rounds to take it all down. I'm your host for the weekend, Oliver German, and I'm joined by Matthew Bell from the Konami offices in Windsor. So the big story leading into the weekend was um, how powerful are the new decks that were introduced with Duelist Alliance. We've seen Shadows, uh, Stellar Knights, and Burning Abyss tearing it apart yesterday, making up together almost 50% of the field. Yeah. So um, today we are left with the break breakdowns for the top 32, where Shadol has made up a big rise actually in numbers, coming up from 25% of the field. Every fourth player in competition was playing that deck up to 47% of the field, 15 decks in the top 32 Shadol. That's an incredible, uh, incredibly large number for a new theme straight out of the gates to appear in such large numbers in the top 32. Right. Uh, Burning Abyss has basically maintained the same number with like 13% in the top 32 and roughly the same number at the start of the day. Yeah, it's gained a few few percent. It was 9% of the field and 13% of the top cut. So it's about what you'd expect from a deck at yes. this stage of the tournament. Whereas Satella Knights, I don't want to say in hot pursuit of the Shadows, but they were also able to up their number going up to 20% in the top 32. Um, the interesting story, of course, are the rogue decks that made it into the top 32. There were quite a few. We've seen a Infernity deck, Mermail deck, Artifact, a Burn deck, um, Spellbooks and a Stun deck in the top 32. We couldn't show you all of them. We focused on some of the household names, the veterans of the game. And in fact, almost every player that we see in the top 8 today has been featured at some point uh, yesterday on our stream yeah uh, the matches uh, that we picked uh, definitely followed some very very successful players uh, our top eight is Tom Payne uh, from the UK from the UK uh, Ugin uh, Height uh, not to be confused Germany. with Eugene yes uh, I s I'm never gonna lift that down um, and then we have uh, Pablo uh, from Italy Paolo. Paolo, sorry. Right, let's let, let's just... Yeah, make, we, got, make we got a large number of people <laughs> that we, we featured today. Right, so uh, speaking of Paolo, um, he's definitely not a shabby player. He's playing Shadol's Burning Abyss. Shabby? Uh, All right. Um, he's the one guy that... Where's Jarrell with his imaginary <laughs> earpiece? You know. He's the one guy that couldn't decide whether to play Shadol's or Burning Abyss. So he just fit everything in one deck. This is his deck list, and it just... There's no end to it. 54 cards in the main deck. Some people thought this was a fluke victory when we had him on the stream yesterday. It was everything but that. He's tearing through the field. He's uh, in the top eight now. And he's going up against his countryman, which is another big story of the weekend. Italians sending three representatives into the top eight. Once again, Europe's most successful nation. Yeah, very powerful players uh, from Italy. We see a large number of them frequently performing extremely well. They have a two times world competitor and a world champion runner up, yes. world championship runner up in Stefano Memorli. So um, that is uh, incredible performance by the Italians once again. In this case, Federico Pastore is Paolo's opponent in the top eight. He is playing Shadows, just like six other players, uh, five other players. So the total count is six for Shadol in the top eight. So this deck continues to dominate, not just the, um, well, day one, also the top 32. Um, one by one taking out the other decks in competition. But we still got Carlos Perez, the remaining Spanish representative in the field who is playing with Burning Abyss. And just in last round's feature match, he was showing us that the deck can actually like go head to head with Shadol's. Yeah, he's, he's played that match more than once this weekend and he played absolutely superbly in that, even in situations that were incredibly technical, figuring out the best way to solve the puzzle and get the victory that he needed to progress to the top eight of this yes. competition. Also, um, a big role played his uh, side deck, of course. We've seen that throughout the weekend. Side yep. deck cards can make all the difference in games two and three. So um, you can catch an opponent off guard. He really doesn't see a mystic walk coming out of your side deck. Well, no, we saw that <laughs> once. Uh, you should oh. never neglect your side deck in preparing for an event. Yes. You are going to play more games twos and threes across the tournament than you are going to play game ones. So your side deck is possibly Almost, well, almost as important as your main yes. deck, if, if not more important, um, in deciding whether or not you will progress to the later stages of the competition. Yes. Every card in there has, you has to have a purpose, like yes. you can argue. Speaking of side decks, uh, Joshua Schmidt still in competition. He has uh, boarded into 
different dimension ground a card that made all the difference. But let's see what happens in our top eight match between, like we said before, uh, Federico on the left side with the shadow only build. Um, going up against Paolo on the right side with Shadow, Burning Abyss, or in short, Shabby. I think that name is probably going to stick. Now it is going to stick. I'm going to make it stick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the hands are loading in. I'm not All right. sure who's going first, but we're seeing a handshake. Um, so we got the hand of Paolo already. So once again, don't get confused by this. Um, we got a Curry Bandit, which is really, really good in his deck. Yeah, he triggers everything. Uh, yes. If Curry Bandit hits at any monsters in his large 28 monster count deck. Um, but apparently uh, Federico was going first, so let's just check what he had in hand. Artifact uh, Sanctum, two Wiretaps, Mystical Space Tafoon, and a Shadow Falco. Yeah, and now all of these cards, but the Falco, have been set on the table. But it's... Um, Paolo's turn, and he kicks things off with the bearded man, the mathematician, and he's doing some calculations, it seems, and comes up with the perfect solution to that formula, sending, what do you think, to the graveyard? Um, actually, uh, I've it's impossible thinking to about tell, it. right? Um, yeah, it's difficult to see which way he wants to take his strategy. But the really interesting thing there is he chose to not use Curry Bandit, which mm. is most effective on your first turn, um, actually outplaying the Artifact Sanctum, which he's probably unaware of. Right. Because what, what other cards could um, answer Curie Bandit? Maybe a uh, breakthrough skill, right? Uh, well, there's no uh, no breakthrough skill in sight. There's two wire taps which are actually of no use to Fred, uh, Frederico uh, right now because he there's no trap cards. Right. And um, speaking of traps, we got quite the interesting deck lists once again. Uh, Federico went, of course, I'm saying of course, although we had a player earlier that didn't play a single copy of it, three copies of Sinister Shadow Games. Um, he's also playing Solemn Warning, a compulsory evacuation device. Three copies, Artifact Centrum, so he's not just playing um, Shadows, he's also playing Artifacts. And uh, Vanity's Emptiness, two copies, two copies of Breakthrough Skills, uh, and two copies of Wiretab, as you mentioned before. And you saw how quickly um, Mathematician was placed in the graveyard, which signals to me that uh, Palio uh, Palo, sorry. Um, I don't know why I keep getting these names wrong. I'm really sorry, guys, you at home, or if you watch this back. Um, immediately placing it in the graveyard. He's probably very aware of what his opponent's playing in his secret tech. And uh, making sure he didn't play the Curry Bandit straight into the Artifact Morale tech, which would have been absolutely crippling at the start of yes, the game. Yes, not to say devastating. Okay, a Mystical Space Tafoon in the end phase used against Book of Moon, which would have outplayed both the Wiretaps by being a spell and not a trap card. Perhaps one of the reasons that it's uh, being so successful, and it's very good against Burning Abyss monsters as well. So, right, let's uh, have a look at what Paolo has in his hand, because he's got all the options. Uh, yeah, we've got a Shadow Fusion, uh, Sir the Malbranch of the Burning Abyss, Sir Malbranch of the Burning Abyss, there's no the in there, Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, Curry Bandit, and Shadow Beast. And here he flips up a Shadow Falcon. And he targets uh, Squamata, which should all and sets that on the field. Which yes. I can bring that card up for you guys um, as soon as it loads in. Just yeah, give it a second to load, and then uh, Paolo meanwhile thinks about his follow-up play. Has a flip effect to destroy a monster. On the That's field. the interesting thing. Like uh, I've seen some of these strategies before, where you go with a lot of monsters, and very often. Players simply decided to cut the trap and spell cards to make sure that they end up with 40 cards. Uh, Paolo instead just said, no, I'm just going to combine both engines and just throw it all together in one big deck. Yeah, and here, now we've uh, seen... Uh, Shadow Fusion. Yeah, Shadow Fusion being played. Uh, it's not a free fusion, but at the same time it's sending uh, Shadow Beast and uh, Squamata to the graveyard, getting second activation of Squamata and also allowing uh, Apollo to draw a card. Right. So this, I think, one of the main elements that were working in Paolo's favor this weekend is that the X factor, the opponent, even when he sees what he's playing, he's got no idea what's coming next. Yeah, you have no idea which direction that the deck is going to take. Uh, as lots of cards are being sent from uh, the deck to the graveyard and all of them can trigger and cause completely different um, game states at any stage. There's pending with the things like Curry Bandit, you're randomizing your early game. 
uh, right. because you have no idea how it's going to resolve. So making a solid plan before you play the Curry Bandit is making wise estimations on what you could draw, but you're not you're not going to have a solid plan on how your game's going to play out until those types of effects have resolved. So my feeling is this deck really isn't for everybody. I mean... <laughs> uh, well, no. If, if you're looking... I mean, the deck is turning out to be surprisingly consistent. Um, it which, which reminds us of the uh, Mermail builds with 50-something cards, which yeah. also turned out to be a lot more consistent than everybody would have expected them to be. So, um, once again, we're going for Synchro Summon, which is something we don't see every day. Oh, this is uh, Arcanite Magician, and there is going to be no response uh, against this Arcanite Magician, and it could very comfortably go after two or two cards here. So, Paolo triggering the effect. Um, Federico trying to telegraph that he's about to have a response, although he isn't, and <laughs> he lost his wiretap. Yeah, you see how he randomized it to <laughs> give his take, even just take away a bit of information from his opponent and uh, perhaps telegraph that he's going to go for a, a monster with the second activation. And then he immediately just um, targets yeah. the other. But, but as you can see, Paolo, like a small smile on his face, he's like, yeah, that doesn't work. And now he's uh, going. Stepping down on the gas pedal with a tour guide, which is once again giving him all the options going for the burning abyss. In this case, he doesn't really have any shadow place, but uh, he doesn't need to. Yeah, well, if you take a look at his hand, he has a shadow fusion, a shadow falco, so he still has a black luster soldier and a curry bandit, and now he's got Dante in play. So with, with um. With Query Bandit, it's it's almost 100% certain that this Black Luster Soldier will go live. If Query Bandit resolves, I think he already has a light in the Dark Monster in his graveyard, right? Um, taking a look. No, I think he needs to. Uh, the Arcanite Magician, if I just pull that card up for you, that's a light monster there, but I don't believe there's any other light monsters in the graveyard for Black Luster Soldier. And there's every chance that um, Pal Palo would uh, want to hold that back. So it's it's interesting to see that Paolo has made so many plays, but he's still holding on to so many cards because uh, both in Burning Abyss and especially in Shadow, I have the feeling that sometimes when you commit to a lot of plays, you run out of cards in your hand. Eventu I mean, eventually that's bound to happen. But in his case, it never seems to happen, to I be honest. It's just lots of self-replacing monsters or monsters that turn cost what would be a cost into an advantage. And he's just just allowing him to hold on to so many plays that gives it leaves all his options open. If you compare it to the uh, opponent side of the field where we've got a uh, Shadow Falco, an Artifact Moral Attack, which can will only activate if it's um, triggered by his opponent in this stage, uh, and a Shadow Hedgehog, which has just been flipped up for, for Shadow Fusion. Right. So how uh, vulnerable is Paolo in this stage? I mean, he's got two monsters, both special summoned from the extra deck, so um, Shadow Fusion is going to play a major part right here. Uh, yeah, it's a free fusion, and there's going to be no response against that uh, free fusion. Will we see, like, is there a chance that Federico can wrap things up? What's his hand again? He's, uh, he's got a Shadow Falco, an Artifact Moral Attack. So um, that's not enough to... No, he's n he's still got to deal with both of these monsters, uh, even with the free fusion, because he has no spells or traps. The uh, Shadow Dragon is not going to be able to take it op take options away from him. Uh, so we're just going to encourage him, um, Federico... Mm -hmm. uh, to pl uh, send the Shadow Beast to the graveyard to draw a card instead, uh, expanding the arsenal of uh, Federico as opposed to taking things away from uh, Paolo. Once again, the Winged Angel, the Shadow Construct, or El Shadow Construct, I should say, hitting play, one of the cards that has... Uh, I think that's the card we've most seen that got special summoned from yeah. the extra deck. Absolute excellent fusion monster. Also, uh, the Arcanet Magician, um, it definitely seemed like the right play, but wouldn't a Black Rose Dragon... It could have been really risky. If he n knew his opponent was playing Artifact Moral Tax, he could have very easily have triggered one, but perhaps that was his intent, because he could have then followed up with a uh, Black Luster Soldier, because right. his Light Monster would have gone to the graveyard. So there, there are reasons to favor this play over Black Rose Dragon, which could have just netted him more of an advantage. Well, he could have, yeah, he could have sweeped the field with uh, Black Rose Dragon, but then if he hits the Artifact Moral Tax, it just his opponent gets a free monster, and then um, Paolo is left with nothing. Really. Yeah. Uh, this way, even if he hits the morale attack, he gains a light monster and can follow up Black Luster Soldiers two attacks. Which so it seems like the right call, doesn't it? 
It seemed like uh, e even though he was risking his opponent's um, uh, some backlash and that, uh, and then he would have uh, taken away some of the impact his opponent could have made with his other cards. Right. So now it's Federico's turn to pull ahead, or at least try to pull ahead, taking out one of Paolo's monsters. But Paolo is just gonna keep the beating coming, to be honest, with so many cards in hand. If he's just interested in how many cards, it's all of them. That's <laughs> all he has. Yeah. And he's. Ah, right, the Shadow Fusion, as we've seen again, being tributed away to get it off the field. Uh, to put the fusion car, uh, Shadow Fusion back in Federico's hand and at the same time denying Paolo the free Shadow Fusion, which is a, a crucial move in the, I don't want to say mirror match here, but when you're going up against the Shadow Deck with a Shadow Deck. Yeah, and well, there's so many different directions that, uh, that Paolo can go from here. You don't want to give him more options by letting him get the Shadow Fusion from fusing materials from the deck. Okay, here we are. It's Black Luster Soldier. There we go. Interestingly, uh, Federico has um, super polymerization. Right. Uh, so he can actually answer this Black Luster Soldier. Right, super polymerization. card has made quite a few waves this weekend. Once again, I, I think we, we should definitely have a closer look at all the top 8 deck lists and see how many copies the Shadol decks are, are running. But my guess is that 2 might be the average number. Yeah, um, when, when you look at it, if Shadol Fusion is the best card in the deck, uh, Super Polymerization has been the MVP of these matches in deciding who, uh, who's winning. Uh, one card uh, makes the deck work, the other card is actually being the deciding factor in games. It's just so powerful right now. Yes, the other thing is like, uh, while Shadow Fusion undoubtedly is a super strong card, you can play around it by tributing your monster. Yeah, there's, there are options for you to uh, make sure that your opponent doesn't get to uh, uh, get their summons for free. You, you force them to, if they want to play Shadow Fusion, commit resources into creating one monster. How do you stop from somebody from using super polymerization against you? I think there's no way, is there? Um, well, no, the only way you can play around that is to deny your opponent the attributes that they need to yeah. uh, create. Which some decks simply can't do. How is the Black Buster Soldier effect being used on uh, Moraltag? Was it not? Yes, it looks like that. Which is interesting, interesting <laughs> to say the least. Um, uh, Paolo's turn still, he follows up with a tour guide play. Um, but we're still trying to figure out, wasn't there a perfect window of opportunity for the super polymerization? There is, but now more now um, we've got Ghost Rick Alucard being summoned, now puts a light and a dark uh, on the field. As opposed to before where he had two light monsters where he'd have to give up one of his own monsters for a super polymerization, he can now use two of his opponent's monsters. Yeah, but... Yeah. Well, well, no, he's he's holding it back for as long as possible. Shadow Falco being destroyed, and then its effect will resummon it. And then Shadow Fusion being played. This could get. Uh, this is going to get complicated <laughs> very, very quickly. Yes, that indeed it does. So there's another El Shadow construct hitting play, but. I'm still not sure. It looked to me like Ghostric Alucard was activated, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Ghostric Alucard was activated. It targeted the Shadow Falco. Falco, by its own effect, if it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, special summons itself back face down. There is a window of opportunity to stop uh, Falco because each of its effects, you can only use each one of the effects per turn. And so if it's destroyed a second time, um, there will be no repercussions for Apollo. That's probably what he's betting on here. And we're going to see Shadol be sent to the graveyard and more cards coming <laughs> out for Paolo. <laughs> the stream of cards is like never ending for Paolo. So honestly, after this, watching this for the second time this weekend, I really feel like I should be playing 54 cards in my deck. That's certainly the message you could take away from uh, the duels that we have seen. But, uh, we'll see how uh, how far much further in this tournament it takes, uh, takes Paolo. You can see how itchy... Actually, if you look at the body language of uh, Federico, um, his his hand is so close to that super polymerization. Uh, he's, look he's looking for a window. Yes. I think that window has just been opened. Nope. 
still it's very interesting so he checks his opponent's grave out obviously he has quite a few options at this point thinking about what to do um, I'm not sure if I can identify all of them to be honest um, not with I have so much experience with the deck um, especially a monstrosity like this uh, deck that Polo is playing where you've got so many different directions you can go in any given game Right, so now it is the time no, for the is. super polymerization. And once again, it might be the deciding factor. Paolo is just like indicating, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> just just go for it and uh, perform your super polymerization. It doesn't seem to be that um, like taken off guard by it. So now Federico gets to add El Shadow Construct to his hand. While Paolo is still not running out of cards, he just gets to add a fresh card to his hand. And Shadow Fusion, of which course, Shadow now has a fusion monster on Federico's hand. And as you look at Federico, his uh, resources are uh, diminishing, and Paolo is just so many cards. Yeah, and like we said, it's, it's never-ending, it seems. It's also funny when you see them shuffle. <laughs> Federico's deck is getting like it's actually getting small where he feel like oh shuffling is not taking that long whereas Paolo still has quite the pile there I think he's it's like now I'm down to 40 <coughs> yeah no <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get your head start um, <laughs> reducing your deck I'm gonna get there in like 5 turns in the meantime I'm drawing everything I need and make sure that I got all the answers where do we go from here So Paolo setting the Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, so he's quite protected. He's yeah, in a he's pretty good spot right there. Very protected. It answers a what should all fusion monster, um, and he's holding uh, two copies of uh, Graf Mana Branch of the Burning Abyss, uh, Sir, and uh, Sir um, Tour Guide. He's just yeah, he's got plenty of cards to make that Phoenix Wing Wind Blast so good. Vanity's emptiness being drawn by. Uh, well, Federico. Federico. Sorry, the way the cards add up on the app, it's sometimes difficult to tell what's been drawn. But there's a Shadow Falco, Vanity's Emptiness, Foolish Burial in his hand right now. So it, it seems like Paolo is going for a slightly more careful approach, taking it, biding his time, basically. Whereas uh, Federico, I think he has to push, doesn't he? Well, yeah. he well, He's running out of cards. The, the longer these exchanges go on, I think ultimately he's going to lose the, the long game. So Federico now going for a Synchro Summon of Leo, Keeper of the Sacred, sacred Tree. That didn't serve Leo very well last round, so nope. we'll, we'll see how that plays out here. Uh, he's got that Leo backed up with a Vanity's Emptiness for when he's ready. Um, so the Shadol Fusion counterplay Perhaps not going to. Uh well, Paolo's got the Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, and he is activating it just now, which is interesting because isn't it his only option against Leo? Ah, uh, but uh, the Foolish Burial is putting the Dragon in the graveyard, which is forcing the activation of ah, Phoenix right. Wing Wind Blast. Does he either use it or lose it here? And I think um, Paolo would be happy to put the Shadow um, Hedgehog back on top of the deck, just to just to slow slow him down. Federico is running on fumes here without the uh, Shadol Fusion. Right. Okay, Shadol Fusion is a follow-up play. That certainly seems to be the right call. And since it is free, that um, card that was just sent to the top of the deck is not going to stay there. Yeah, it's going to get shuffled away. Um, and actually, more options now being added because of uh, Shadow Hedgehog being sent to the graveyard allows uh, Federico to um, add another card to his hand. And Paolo is basically face palming himself, it seems. He didn't seem to be aware of that line of plays. Yeah, we've, we've had this. Uh, 
some of you guys said that Federico is outplaying Paolo. Um, so far, it didn't appear that way to me. Uh, well, we're in a situation where Paolo's got so many cards that if he does lose a couple of exchanges, he's not running out of options to uh, counter that. Right. So Winda is making an appearance on the field. He also gets to search for yet another monster, adding it to, it to his hand. So he's, he's definitely hanging in there, and uh, quite a lot so, much more convincingly than we at first thought. The uh, window is going to be very interesting, especially when you consider the cards in Polly's hand, actually. Uh, Curry Bandit, Sir, uh, Graf, Shadow Fusion, and Tor Guide. Um, he can only special summon once under the window, yep. so a lot of the he's only really got one of the those options from his deck. So both players, basically, it seems like they are openly openly discussing the options because there's so much exchange going on between them, and both of them, of course, being Italian and um, friendly with each other most of the time. Yeah, I don't know how well these two uh, know each other or if they play in the... Well, chances are they do know each other quite well because they, they have... They would have met at least at Nationals <coughs> or yes. something. There have been quite a few occasions when we saw both these two lists in competition at the very same event. So now Federico play proceeds with the battle phase. About time, if you ask me. Leo is Yeah, it has been a while since... Uh, <laughs> Plays have happened. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Leo taking down the Exceed Monster. Winda is standing back. And that is that is it. This is going to be a very strong turn for uh, Federico. Because he's got Vanity's Emptiness. And he's backed up with um, very, very powerful monsters. So perhaps even though he's, he's down so many cards. Because he has the right answers to all of the options available to Paolo. He, he's in a very strong position. Despite it looking... Despite it looking pretty dark for him not all that long ago. Yes. So what do you think was uh, the reason for the face palm of Paolo? Was there something that he overlooked? Um, perhaps giving his opponent a free fusion which uh, allowed um, Federico to then get back into this. There we go. Yeah. Well, there's the Vanity's Emptiness. Um, but Paolo still has quite a few cards in hand. He's probably going to be forced into a more defensive position, right? He's kind of almost forced into Curry Bandit. And you can see he doesn't want to do it. Yeah. But there it is. And Federico, of course, has no response. So Curry Bandit blows up. And together... Oh, there you, see the, you see how um, Federico acted when uh, the dragon was sent to the, the Great Box. <laughs> That's going to turn off Vanity's emptiness. And there's a Squamata also going to be triggering. Right. And is that Fleece as well? I'm not no, sure. I, don't, I don't know if he plays that or if I... Uh, he I think he does play that. Um, no. No. Well, there was no space. Oh, oh yeah, he, he does. does. He does. He does so, play wow, fleece. he's going to get... Uh, oh, but of course, the Vanity's Emptiness is going to prevent him from special summoning. The deck looks pretty small <laughs> at this point. <laughs> how, like how did that happen? Considering there's like so many cards in his deck, it's, it's, yeah. it's getting there. I think his, his graveyard is already larger than the deck, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> He's usually like, oh, this shuffles so easily. All right. So... Vanity's Emptiness Gun. And oh, okay, yeah, so, so the way the chain was set up. Right, so uh. Feliz is uh, coming back, which is uh, certainly good for Paolo. More field presence, of course. It just gives him... And both players... I mean, at this point, it's, it's very understandable that they do have to check the contents of the graveyards because they are, like, like we said, they are bigger than the decks by now. And... It one play can make all the difference. If you know that your opponent has access to a card like Black Luster Soldier or not, that is going to be game deciding at this stage. 
It's also keeping track of just how it did my opponent already special summon this turn, especially when these turns are taking so long. Yes. Winder is uh, preventing both players from special summoning more than once per turn. Yeah, so let's once again take a look. This is the field of Federico, very, very threatening with uh, Leo, the keeper of the Sacred Tree. And I think, um, if I remember correctly, Paolo has no answer to that card, or at least no immediate answer for the time being. No, it's... If he can resolve a Shadow Fusion, he's got access to a the Construct, which can take the Leo Leo down. Yep. Oh. Uh, in a one -on -one. But there's a Soul Charge uh, in uh, Federico's hand, so... Yes. That's incredible. That's a that's a possibility. So uh, Federico has one more card in hand, which yeah, like you just said, the soul charge. Um, this is gonna allow for a very big play after whatever Paolo can pull off to come back in that game. Okay, he's put the window back in the his opponent's extra deck with uh, the flip. Falco gets flipped. Special summons dragon. Dragon gets attacked. Dragon activates. So he's opened up his. Um, special summon options for next turn so now he can actually make use of all of these cards he has in his hand and there's a lot of them <laughs> yeah speaking of lots of cards this graveyard is quite impressive yeah that yeah. might already be 40 cards almost i think he has to consider um does he have enough options left for a free should all fusion well the vanity's emptiness is gone and there are no face down cards on federico's side of the field he's so also in a good position where he can now make his plays, then set Vanity's Emptiness so his opponent's comeback plays. Uh, including that Soul Charge don't do anything, so the entire yes. field can be Especially wiped since out here. Um, it's activation cost for Soul Charge, so the opponent, uh, Federico, might be looking at coming back with a big Soul Charge for like 3,000, and he just like lost 3,000 life points. Well, he can't, he can't summon, and uh, the way the Soul Charge works is you only actually lose life points for the monsters that you oh, do right. get summoned. There's no activation cost. No. And... Uh, this we're likely to see the entire field get turned upside down, and then Vanity's emptiness put in Federico uh, back. And all the way that this whole thing is turned around is um, now that he can special summon and play the cards in his hand, he can put the combos together necessary to clear these monsters out. Whereas before he was being completely shut down by the window, which is just saying you, well, you can't play all your cards. So you yes. can have a hundred of them, but you're only playing one of them. Yep. And not a single one of those are actually going to deal with this. Which reminds a lot of the uh, Buchin tactics with uh, Kaiser Colosseum. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, yeah, you can have all the monsters in the world, but you're only going to get to special uh, to summon one of them. And does it beat uh, the Bujin Yamato, yes. who's just running around punching everything in the face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like that kid at school. I that just nobody likes. There's the scene in one of the Matrix movies um, where there's all the agent. The yeah. guys in the suits are getting beat up by one guy. I just see Bujin Yamato <laughs> throwing everything around. I always wondered how it attacks someone with a crane as well. It probably just gets the crane, it's the pole, and starts knocking them back. Something like that. I've got a weird imagination sometimes, I'll be honest. <laughs> All right, so uh, Paolo is once again beating his head in the most literal, literal sense. He, he doesn't seem to be too happy with some of the moves he's made. And uh, like you guys said, Federico... Wow. I didn't see that coming, to be honest. He picked up his cards. Yeah, I he's just like, no, I, I can't beat this. I can't I can't deal with Leo, I think. He seems really mad that he's misplayed there. Yeah, uh, And I he's mean, banging his head that he's so, so given the game up. So, yes, Federico did, in fact, out, uh, outplay Paolo, even though I'm not 100% sure how he did it exactly. It seems like uh, Paolo, even though... He had all the cards. He was out of options at this point. To well, deal. what we can't see is in his graveyard. Um, I don't know how many of his... If he went through both his El Shadol constructs and then he doesn't have a way of getting rid of the Leo um, because there's nothing else in his deck that's non-targeting. Perhaps there was a different line of play that could have been taken and he missed that and we've just accepted, okay, I've given up all my options to deal with this and partly knowing his deck list so well, but visibly displeased and angry at himself that he's uh, allowed that to happen. Yes. Because, I mean, with so many cards in hand, you <laughs> are bound to have a couple of options. And he did have options at uh, various stages in that game. Yeah, and just uh, eventually being locked out for long enough and then he makes one misstep and, and goes. Although, I imagine I'm trying to figure out, it must have been uh, from information that he has, that he knows 
of what's available to him because we don't actually have access to all the cards in the right. graveyard. And the interesting thing, though, uh, we, we saw that Federico, I think he never lost his cool in that first game. No, I you can see, even at the point where he was looking very nervous and his hand kept moving towards the super polymerization, because <coughs> he's waiting for that window, waiting for the window, and it paid off big time for him. Right. So let's see how they're going to game three, if there's any more side deck changes being made. Taking into consideration who, who will elect to go first or second in this final right. game. Now we can see the... Oh wait, not final games, game two, sorry. Yeah, it's just game two. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> here. <laughs> We're not quite there yet, but now we can finally see those 54 cards getting <laughs> shuffled. It's quite a fun view, to be honest, when you compare it to all the, the sm much, much smaller decks. It's just this monster. Yeah. You need very big hands to shuffle it properly as well. Well, I don't want to get into a massive conversation about shuffling because that's something that Robert is so, so interested in and I don't understand it. But <laughs> <laughs> so, um, interestingly enough, I mean, we when we had Paolo on the stream earlier, uh, yesterday rather, he seemed to be perfectly aware of all of his options and how he can get himself out of a bad situation. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that is uh, if that was the case in that match. He seemed to be losing track a little bit, and then suddenly, w whereas on the other hand, Federico was perfectly aware of what the outs were that Paolo had, and and suddenly, uh, well, Federico is uh, taking pa Paolo to school, and he's like, "This is how it works. You've just lost the duel," and eventually he's like, "Yeah, you're right," and just yeah, he, he up. realized. Uh, he had no way of dealing with the Leo, and it's like, it doesn't matter what I do here, I'm eventually going to lose, as Leo is just going to keep attacking, keep attacking, and I've burned through my options so fast. The Leo is an excellent card for your extra deck. Yeah, certainly. But uh, once again, we got to give credit to uh, Federico Pastore, who, who did, in fact, outplay his opponent right here. I mean, we, we've never seen anybody shuffle up with... Uh, what six thousand life points, something like that? F five cards in hand, and just I want to say just two cards on the opponent's side of the field. Yeah, I mean it's it like when you normally look at that situation, at least uh, historically from uh, in this game, it usually means the other person is about to pick up their yes. cards. Not, not here, unless you know one of those cards is a wave motion cannon sitting on eight counters. <laughs> yeah, that that does happen. <laughs> All right, so once again, the cards will be coming in in just a second. Uh, both players, Paolo is still. Is he on tilt here? Yeah, that is the question. Because he's still punishing himself for this, this mistake that he's made. I mean, he, he did uh, take a loss yesterday, and after that we featured him on the stream, and it, it didn't really seem to affect him. He seemed to be super confident. But, uh, well, this is a different day. It's a new day. Um, well, speaking of new, uh, new game oh, as well. Interesting mind control coming in from the side deck. Uh, which is very good against Shadolf since they're quite slow when you set them. Uh, taking your opponent Shadolf, Falco, and then flipping it up. You are fighting through the Sinister Shadow games, but mm -hmm. very interesting. He's got a couple of good options here. Yes, uh, he starts uh, things off with a Curry Bandit, and then after setting three, play advances to the end phase where Curry Bandit is going to send five more cards to the graveyard, or four more indeed, he because one of them gets added to his hand, which is the Mystical Space Typhoon. I wonder what that says about his hand to the opponent. Um, to take Mystical Space Typhoon over uh, Regeki Break when you have so many Burning Abyss monsters in your deck, and possible, uh, I think, th was that the only two options? Mystical Space Typhoon? Yeah, th of, of the other options. Okay. I don't think so, yes. Solemn Warning being Mystical Space Typhoon. So uh, Federico starts with. Um, uh, Shadow Fusion, not for free, but Solemn Warning, like you said, is going to deal with that. However, that's pretty costly for Paolo, who's going down to 6,000 life points. And Federico, I mean, Mind Control, he seemed to be in such... He seemed to be in total control of the game in the first game, so I think he will know exactly when to use that Mind Control and uh, make sure it does the most damage possible. Yeah. And we're going to see Sinister Shadow Games being used in the end phase of uh, Federico. So um, time has just been called in the other remaining matches. 
we will have a few more minutes, at least uh, five. I'm not sure if it's ten, to be honest, because we started a little bit later to set up the stream. So, but but some that is definitely something to keep in mind. And I have a feeling that Paolo was just just speeding up just a little bit when he heard that that gong that you might have not heard on the stream, especially when he's down one game here. Yeah, and we saw a really a uh, really nice play of sending the Shadow Beast to the graveyard, and then Shadow Falco being able to bring that beast back up. Right. At the same time, we um, there were two powerhouses going up against each other, Umut Serin and uh, Joshua Schmidt. And we just heard that uh, Joshua Schmidt has overcome Umut Serin and advances to the semi-finals. So congratulations. When you see this later, here the game is far from being decided between Federico Pastore and Paolo Pacciana. Yeah, we're going to see a Shadow Beast uh, flip summon. Mystical Space Foon taking out uh, <laughs> Mystical Space Foon, Mystical <laughs> Space Foon, Mystical Space Foon, Karma Cut. Uh, that's always one of the worst uh, exchanges that you can yes. be on the receiving end of. of mis hit well, Hitting your opponent's Mystical Space Foon, only have it chained and take out one of your own cards, making their Mystical Space to Foon um, so effective. Yes, but uh, Paolo has cleared the back row of his opponent. That was definitely the, the goal here. And uh, now he needs to dish out some damage because he's behind in life points and like we said the time is going to be called soon yeah the solemn warning uh, definitely taking life points away uh, taking away a big chunk of life points to be going into time with right we have yet another result in from the top 8 Federico Sopini overcame Carlos Perez, knocking out the last remaining Spanish player in competition. And that was a Burning Abyss deck that he was playing, wasn't it? So, uh, Yes, so now the, the last Burning Abyss deck is out of the field. And if you want to see a deck win that tournament that is not uh, only Shadows, well, now we do have uh, one or two builds with Shadows and a few artifact monsters. But if you want to see something that is truly not a Shadol deck, then you should be rooting for Paolo Pacciana, who is currently a little bit behind. So uh, chances are we might see a total dominance of Shadols at this tournament. Yeah, uh, all if all top four slots end up being Shadols, I'll be I'll speak pretty loudly about um, the of the three decks, which could be considered the, s the the best option, or at least it will dictate what side deck cards, how heavily people are going to prepare of the, f the triangle um, against Shadol, which we then, which then can potentially uh, take uh, make the effectiveness in the next tournament for Shadol uh, less right. effective. So uh, the mind control that we mentioned earlier has now come into play for uh, Federico, and Paolo is still kind of shaken, it seems to me, um, with uh, Federico now not only claiming control, also being able to uh, special summon. A, is that a Dark Arm Dragon, right? Uh, no, no, no. He doesn't no. have Dark Arm Dragon. He has a Shadow Dragon. That's a Shadow Dragon. Shadow Fusion Artifact Sanctum in here. Oh, okay, so I missed quite a bit right there, uh, looking at the top eight, that are, or top four rather, that are lining up in front of us. Uh, we also can give you a heads up. The next match on the stream is going to be Italy's Federico Sopini against Germany's Joshua Schmidt. So uh, that's a little heads up for now, but once again, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, still very much in that match, Federico Sopini, uh, Federico Pastore, my god, uh, using Mathematician, and now he can search his deck and send something to the graveyard. And it's going to be a Shadow Hedgehog. Right, so what is Federico's train of thought here? Um, Federico has a uh, compulsory evacuation device which can answer uh, Palo's Shadow Fusion. Uh, well, it's Fusion Monster, but again, that's if your opponent is playing Shadow Fusion, they're then going to be able to, if it's a free Shadow Fusion, uh, they're going to get a construct which is going to allow a huge sequence of plays. Um, 
He's played the mind control to take his opponent, his opponent's uh, shit old beast, right? Yes. That's what's happened. So his he doesn't want to give that back to um, Polo. Back to Polo. It's a bit of a tough situation because Polo does will get access to that free um, shit old fusion shit waiting old in fusion. his hand. Because the mathematician's been summoned, uh, Federico is not going to have the opportunity to tribute his fusion monster to set shit old beast to deny Polo that. Um, that free shell fusion. So he's got to play his cards very, very carefully here. But Federico, once again, being or seemingly being aware of everything that is going on and every every option in this match, seems to come up with something, doesn't he? Okay, he's so he's decided to go with. Oh, okay, the way he played those uh, should all beast and should all dragon. So he's gonna get. Uh, I can only use um, Shadow Beast once per turn. Right. So he gets to add, add Shadow Winder to his side of the field. So we're probably going to see. Uh, um, no. Um. Oh, he's making a uh, rank 5 XE, and now uh, Apollo is uh, <coughs> shaking his head there. <laughs> so it's uh, Volcasaurus. Um, yeah. Wow. Now with the obvious damage. move of taking down that. That is. Uh, once again, Federico Pastora, the master, identifying all the options that I clearly can't see. It's um, yeah, it's, it's surprising what he can do with that deck. I mean, we've seen it two days in action, and, and still it seems like he's got a whole di he's on on a whole different level, different level of understanding that deck and mastering it. Yeah, wow. There's going to be a free Shadow Fusion coming out from Polo, but that was just rather huge, just uh, blowing away the Shadow Beast, uh, getting a lot of damage in. Right. And we, we saw the judge putting a die on the table. So uh, that indicates that these guys are now in the timeout procedure, if I'm not mistaken. So um, there's only so much time remaining for Paolo, and he's far, far behind in this match. Let's see which rank three of choice comes out for Paolo. Yeah, so so what does he have really here? Uh, looking at his deck, he's got access to Dante, Alucard, which can eventually become a Downward Magician, um, Levia the Sea Dragon. There isn't actually anything else here, so most Rather limited options here. Dante? Dante seems like the safest bet, doesn't it? Can attack over the, um, over the Magician, definitely. No, he goes for Alucard, Alucard because he's right. um, concerned about his opponent's face down spells or traps, which we know is a compulsory evacuation device and a Shadow Fusion. Yeah. So. And Shadow Fusion being destroyed by Alucard. And Federico doesn't seem to mind that too much. So, n yeah, he's waiting for the right moment, and I think that moment has just arrived. Now that the uh, Alucard did not find its mark. Uh, this Shadol Construct, which is most the most likely card of choice for Apollo, is going to be countered by Compulsory Evacuation Device. And that, of course, is making all the difference. I mean, Apollo, what has he got left with? Uh, Shadow Beast in hand, right? Level 5 monster. With so, um, that, I gotta say, that doesn't look for Apollo, unless, once again, I'm missing an option here. I don't believe so. I was wondering if there was a Gaia Charger in the extra deck, because he could have went uh, Volcasaurus into Gaia Charger um, for ah, Federico. I right. don't believe he plays the Gaia Charger. I've always would have saw an extra 2,600 points of damage coming. He does play Michael, uh, the Light Swan, the Arch Light Swan in his extra deck. It's an interesting choice, but maybe he like, he, he never pushed for game in that way before. And he's like, yeah, this is, this is enough control. I don't need anything, anything else. And uh, is that Shadol uh, Hedgehog and Shadol Falcon being sent to the graveyard? Right. So, well, Paolo has mastered to put up a field, but that's going to change in just a second. In exactly that very moment when the compulsory deals with his fusion monster, now he's left with, uh, with no defense, I think. Well, apart from the monsters on the field. And just to get some damage, he attacks over the mathematician, but. Again, that's making a problem worse because uh, Mathematician just draws a card for uh, Federico. And Federico draws into his two cards. I think there's a Soul Judge among them. I um, doubt he's going to use that in this situation. No, that's not very likely. A Volcasaurus 
taking down another card. That is really, really strong here. Another 1800 damage coming in. If only he could make Gaia. Never mind. <laughs> Where do we go from here? He goes to defense. Ah, right. He's uh, very aware of the time, the of course. end of match procedure. Yes. And he just makes a no, wall. We, we can see both players um, f frequently reaching for the die. Uh, very aware of what's going on here. And uh, Federico, he doesn't want to gamble here. And he doesn't have to gamble with a 5,500 life point advantage. Two monsters on the field. Um, a face down. Soul charge. It doesn't do anything, to be honest. But it well scares the opponent. It scares the <laughs> opponent, right? And that's probably going to be enough in that situation. So how is Paolo Paciana? Can I he come back from that? I no, he can't. can't. He extends the hand, and uh, Federico Pastore, being the master that is, and friend at the same time, revealing his face down card, his last option. But uh, yeah, the soul charge wasn't going to scare yeah, anybody. Even even then, Paolo Paciana knew that he had to go big or go home. And in that case, the 54 cards apparently go home it, it just didn't work out for him and uh absolute superb play from federico yes um yes. just keeping his cool timing his uh answers right. very very precisely because as he had first opportunity black luster soldier shows up he's like not yet not yet <laughs> and then just picking it up from right. there one step ahead of the opponent 10 steps ahead of the commentators i really gotta give him credit for that that was an impressive impressive show in my, on my uh, for me, Ab absolutely. I think mean, uh, pl if he plays that well in the uh, remaining parts of this tournament, then I, I think he's a very strong pick for uh, overall winner. But then we've got a lot of titans still left in competition. Right. Speaking of them, we got uh, Federico Sopini, the guy we mentioned earlier. We had on the feature yesterday. Did he win his feature match? I think he did not win his feature match. Let me just quickly look that up. Um, yeah, I don't, re I don't remember. Supini played against Joshua Schmidt. Ah, and Joshua won. Yeah, yeah, Joshua won in very convincing fashion, we, may we two have to say. 2-0 victory. So it was a 2-0 victory, and it seemed like uh, Federico was getting stomped in that match. It was the second-to-last match in the Swiss portion of the event. He recovered, he bounced back, and now he's once again putting on a show. And now he's going to get his rematch in the semi-finals of YCS Madrid against the very same Joshua Schmidt. So... Well, if that's not a story, I don't know what is, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other match we have is uh, the reigning European champion, Eugen Hyde, who is um, the second German in competition, who went up against the UK's Tom Payne, the sole representative of the UK in the top eight. So that's, of course, an all-time classic as well, uh, UK versus Germany. I I'm afraid I don't have the results just yet. I know that they will be in the written feature, which you can check out on the uh, written coverage page a link to that is below this video on twitch or if you're watching it on the official website in the upper right corner i can promise it probably didn't go to penalties <laughs> uh, otherwise we'll be seeing uh eugen going through most likely so right so that also means that no matter what happens in the match between tom payne and eugen hyde we have four shadow decks in the top four so it's a meeting of the Shadow Masters at this point, and the big question is who has, well, the best main deck tech to yeah. go come out successful in the mirror match, and who's got the best sideboard options? It's also an absolute mastery of timing. Uh, it's going to be so critical in these matches of when you should, uh, your super polymerizations are being played, uh, when you can afford to leave your fusion monster out there, how much information that telegraphs to your opponent. Right. Um, there are so many things to be taken into consideration for a the Shadow Mirrors, especially for players at, that are this experienced and this far in the tournament. They're not going to miss anything. Right. The thing is, um, once again, uh, Federico Pastore, who we just saw, um, what kind of options does he have in the mirror match against other Shadow players? Let's look at it uh, once again at his deck list. I mean, um, he's got Chain Disappearance in his side deck, Light Imprisoning Mirror, Majesty's Fiend is an uh, interesting side deck pick. That is definitely an interesting uh, to side stop deck. The Shadow Fusions actually getting much out of them. There's a s one Super Polymerization in the main deck, one in the side deck. Um, well, he, he does have the, what we just saw, um, the Mind Control, that yeah. apparently makes all the difference. Mind Control would be if very, very big pick. Identify all the options that you can do with it. Um, also, speaking of side decks, once again, Joshua Schmidt. 
uh, different dimension ground. Yeah, that, that was, was the card that won the match against yeah, Federico Sapini. he turned Sapini. off the last option, the answer to Mathematician yes. that wasn't a fact bailer. And uh, the other thing is, n not just you need to know what cards you, you need to take your main deck of course you need to have some side deck cards for this particular matchup but you also need to know how to play your cards and Joshua Schmidt yesterday we were in a situation he assembled a field he's got a vanity's emptiness um, to basically secure his field we thought like this is gonna be game he's just gonna put everything on the field vanity face down just say go opponent can try to come back flip vanity win the game however he went for a different approach. Yeah, he created a situ engineered a situation where his opponent was going to have to commit all his remaining resources to try and get a playthrough by denying the free Shadol Fusion. But and attributing his monster. Yeah, right? he attributed his monster, set it face down, and he had the Shadol Fusion in his hand, so his opponent commits everything to it. Worst case scenario, Joshua's, okay, I play my Shadol Fusion, I win. Um, <laughs> best case scenario, his opponent has no way well, of actually I think the best case scenario there. was Federico draws for his turn and extends the hand because yeah. that's basically best, what yeah. happened best case and worst case he wins the turn after when it's yes. back to his so next battle phase Joshua Schmidt master of the cards in that situation he really knew about all the options and um, I know that his friends that have been testing together with him have either learned from him or they came up with these conclusions together because Alpay Engin a player who almost made the top cut was very um, among the top of the standings for a very long time this weekend he also, in his uh, preparation, did that move frequently. So we're just getting some information from the side that we're not going to take a break. We're going to uh, dive right into the semi-finals, which, as we pointed out, are going to be between Federico Sopini from Italy and Joshua Schmidt from Germany. Um, depending on whether Eugen Haidt won his match, we will have either one or two Germans in the top four. If Tom Payne is going to win, we have... Um, a uh, UK guy, of course, together with two Italians and one German. So the the big question here is, is it going to be Germany versus Italy? A thing we have seen frequently, especially at the European Championship level. For some reason, both nations are always like... Yeah, they're, they're always very highly representative in terms of people that attend. Yes. And um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. We yes. had the final...